Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this particular screencast we're going to be looking at angular motion. Angular motion differs from linear motion in the sense that it's the movement of a body or an object or a person in a circular path and it usually revolves or rotates around an axis of rotation. The way we create angular motion is applying an eccentric force to a body. And in particular, we apply that eccentric force to the outside of a body. So if you imagine a tennis ball, if you apply a force, which is known as an eccentric force, to the outside of that ball, the ball will rotate or it will spin. And that is angular motion. Good examples of angular motion, other than the tennis ball that I have just explained, would be anything that moves in a, in a circular path. So think about leg movements when running. So the leg is a semicircular path, it's rotating around the hip joint, and so therefore runs in an angular motion. The same with the arm around the shoulder joint. When it's moving, it's, it's rotating in angular motion. Think about cyclists rotating their legs around the pedals or the wheels going around the axis of the bike would also be good examples of angular motion and of course you've also got elements of gymnastics so cartwheels somersaults these sorts of skills are all based around angular motion once again we need to remember newton's first law of inertia which you can recap there on the screen but when we're talking about angular motion of course once we've created angular motion the body will remain rotating or in a rotational state until another force like air resistance or friction will slow it down or will act upon it. So that state of inertia is always important to remember with both linear motion and angular motion. To start angular motion, you also need to think about the principal axes of rotation that you're going to be using. If you push a body or an object around a certain axis, it will rotate differently. So we talked about eccentric forces and pushing it outside the, of the center of mass, but in terms of where you place that force will make a body rotate differently. A principal axis of rotation is an imaginary line that passes through the center of mass which we can move the body. So we have three principal axes of rotation. So if we look at our human picture on the left, the first axis is what we call the longitudinal axis. That runs from top to bottom and it enables someone to spin or turn around or pivot or move or turn. The second axis is what we call the transverse axis. This runs from right to left or left to right and allows a person to do a somersault. So if you imagine um, there was a big skewer going through that person and you twisted them, they can flip forwards or backwards. So somersaults or rolls would be good examples of that. And the final axis is the frontal axis, and this runs from front to back, funnily enough, with the frontal. And again, imagine that person being skewered through the middle and we rotated them. Well, this allows that person to do things like cartwheels. And so good examples of each of those axes, because you'll need them for your exam. So a good example of a longitudinal axis skill would be something like a triple axle in ice skating or a fast spin in ice skating so the skater builds up momentum then jumps and then spins around very fast around the longitudinal axes. A good example of the transverse axes would be something like a somersault or a backflip on a beam so you can see we're running along the transverse axis line and we flipped along that motion. And a final example to help you with the frontal axis would be a cartwheel, again working on a beam or on the floor, 
gymnastics, we can do cartwheels due to that frontal axis. The same as linear motion, we also need to have these motion descriptors. And angular motion essentially uses the word angular in front of a lot of the same ones as the linear motion. So they're quite similar to the linear motion descriptors. So we have six for angular motion. We have angular distance, angular displacement, angular speed, angular velocity, moment of inertia, and angular momentum. I will cover the first four in this screencast and in the second screencast on angular motion, I will look into detail of some of the others because they require a little bit more thought. So let's start with angular distance and angular displacement. Well, if you remember the work we've done on linear motion, you're just essentially putting the word angular in front of these calculations or definitions. So therefore, ang uh, angular distance is the total length of the angular path covered from one position to another. Because you're talking about rotating bodies or rotating people, so it's an angular path. And we measure angular distance in radians, or rads, R-A-D-S. And I'm sure you can guess that angular displacement is therefore the shortest straight line angular route from start to finish, again measured in radians or rads. So those two are fairly straightforward. We also have angular speed, which is relatively straightforward once you go back and look at your note on linear motion. Angular speed is the rate of change in angular distance. So therefore, logically, the calculation is angular speed equals angular distance, but this time measured in radians or rads, divided by time taken in seconds. So again, very, very similar to linear motion descriptors. Speed, oh sorry, that's just say angular speed. Angular speed is therefore measured in rads per second because it's the combination of angular distance measured in radians and time taken in seconds. So it's rads per second. And it could be things like you're, you're asked in the exam to measure the angular speed of a rotating diver. So you're talking about the speed in which they start the turn that they're making, say it's a somersault, and that the speed it's taking them to make that whole rotation. So that is an angular path. Finally in this screencast we come to angular velocity. Again, similar to straightforward velocity in linear motion, we're just using the word angular in front of a lot of these concepts. So it's the rate of change of angular displacement. Therefore, the calculation for this, as you can probably guess, angular velocity is angular displacement divided by time taken, where angular displacement is measured in radians, or rads, and time taken is obviously measured in seconds, so you can guess for yourself that angular velocity is measured in rads per second, or radians per second. Hopefully that's cleared up the angular motion descriptors or the basic ones for you and move over to the next screencast to discuss moment of inertia and angular momentum because they are a little bit more complex than these have described. Thanks for watching and again if you need any more help with biomechanics please head to the iSpeakPE channel on YouTube.